Hey friends, it's Lady Ambrosia. I hope you all are doing well. I wanted to hop on here and just make a quick video, and I know that it's kind of late right now, but I've been thinking a lot. <coughs> Excuse me. I've been thinking a lot about how, as witches, and on this platform here on YouTube, our experiences, of course, are different, but particularly the difference in our witchy experiences based off of our geographical kind of environment. Um, and for instance, earlier today in the interview that I was doing um, with Mandy C, and we were discussing, you know, our paths and our traditions and um, kind of exchanging our values and like what we believe in and how we perceive the gods. We also got to talking about um, kind of the different animals and correspondences that we both might share, but we both might not share. So, for instance, a witch who is in Ireland versus a witch who is in the States or the UK or Australia we are all going to, and maybe a lot of us do follow a similar kind of wave of thought or subscribe to, to similar ideas. But think about things like the herbs that we use and how much of that is readily accessible to us based off of our climate and our geographical location and also the animals that we feel speak to us found within the wild so you know animals such as possums you know here in america being our only marsupial i believe and what a possum represents here in america and what sort of messages a witch might receive from the possum versus the potential lack of that being in other geographical locations. And I think there is the argument of, you know, that message from the possum spirit could also manifest through other animals in those areas. But it's something that I feel like a lot of us as witches tend to not think about and we don't really think about the global scale of things as witches and we kind of think about our own geographical land that we're on and I think that especially for the witches who have traveled internationally I'm sure that they also have you know a different experience on sort of the spirits of the land, the spirits of the land. And, you know, when we're talking about the spirits of the land and what that means to us, I often do think of the wild spirits that embody the land that you live on. And that could be the animals of that land. That could be deceased spirits of that land. And that could be the overall energy of that land itself. I mean, if we were going to talk about ley lines... So I just, I think that it's something that gets overlooked a lot and is something so beautiful and unique to your geographical witchy landscape. And it's worth looking into and it's worth getting to know the land that you occupy. And what differences for me as an American witch might I encounter that could be night and day different from the witches in Ireland or in the UK or anywhere, um, you know, anywhere. The witches of the Middle East, the witches of Australia, the witches of Africa, the witches of Latin America. You know, what, what experiences do we all share as far as living this path as a witch 
but I'm sure that our geographical locations also make differences in our practices. Um, for instance, you know, I have a few friends who are Aussie witches and they talk about some of the Aboriginal influence kind of in their practice based off of the land that they occupy. I know plenty of American witches. You straight up this camera. I know plenty of American witches who have a lot of Native American shamanism within their practice um, because of the land that we occupy. And think about the gods from these lands. So I don't, I don't know. I think that it's definitely something that people tend to overlook and not really think that much in depth about. So I think I've rambled on here long enough. I've drank like two cups of sleepy time tea and I can kind of feel it kicking in and working. So I think I'm going to hop off of here. And I hope that I've made sense in my insomnia, drowsiness, sleepy time tea um, concoction. And until next time, blessed be.